best thing about having a YouTube channel is that when you start to realize something is going terribly wrong, then you can always switch it up. Kind of like how deck profiles don't really work at the end of the format, which is why we haven't been uploading them. But then that allows me to give you guys some other awesome content on the channel, seeing that there won't be any deck profiles anytime soon, unless the ban list drops or until the new set drops, so at least around into the 27th. Today we're going to be talking about cards from Cybernetic Horizon, and we have a possibility of streaming today. And seeing since the other videos haven't been going so great, I guess we're going to have to cancel the Forbidden List series because, again, you guys decide the content. So if you guys want to see more videos like this in particular, destroy that like button. Let's get to 100 likes. I'm the Cali Effect. And again, if you guys want to see more content like this, then also destroy that subscribe button. But use your horizons to hit that notification bell because we just too strong. Without further ado, I present to you the remaining cards in Cybernetic Horizon. Let's dive right into it. Pretty excited. All right, guys. Normally, uh, if you guys want any news, you can check out my like page. Uh, my like page is... It's, it's a like page. Just type in the Cali Effect. You go there. It has information. And I try my best to give you guys the information on there. But diving into this, let's see what we got. The first monster is Cosmo Brain, a level 7 dark spellcaster monster with an effect, of course. It has 1500 attack and 2450 defense. I'm pretty uh, skeptical about this card because... Normally we get level seven spellcasters, they're terrible. The last good level seven spellcaster we have was Dark Magician. Huh, that can't be right. Uh, this card cannot be normal summoned or set. It can only be special summoned by, from your hand by sending one non-effect monster from your hand or face up on your side of the field to the graveyard. Okay, you can only use this card to effect once per turn. This card gains attack equal to the level of the sent monster times 200. So if you're sending, I don't know, a Metaphys Dragon or Dark Magician, it's going to gain 1,400 attack, making up a 2,900 attack monster. Okay. It's next effect is you can tribute one effect monster you control, special summon a normal monster from your hand or deck. Now, I actually could see this in Dark Magician. You pitch a Dark Magician to summon this card, and then you tribute, like, your Magician's Rod to summon another Dark Magician from your deck, and now you can use them both for a Link Summon. That's not terrible. Um, I just don't like all of the resources that it requires you to, to you to use and the fact that you have to send a Dark Magician from your hand to the graveyard. Uh, you know, you already probably have ways to summon it anyways with your Magician's Rod. I don't know. I'm kind of skeptical about this card. I'm kind of not. I think it's a pretty decent card, and I think we have some good use for the Dark Magician players. The next card we're going to be talking about is Manjin Duo. I hope I said its, its name right. It's like Majin Boo, but except Boo, it's Duo, right? All right, it's a level three Dark Fiend of Flip Effect monster with zero attack and 2,000 defense. Its effect reads, you can only use this card's one and two effects per turn. Oh, God. If this card is sent from the deck to the graveyard, you can special summon this card. I love this card. In phase down defense position. Hmm. Well, at least it has a flip effect. Its flip effect is you can send one Fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard. Now, immediately, this card screams Arch Fiend Harris. I, that's the only fiend monster I can think of that can gain this card's effect. And if I remember correctly, we actually do have a fiend link monster that can send this card from the deck to the graveyard. So it might be as free as we think. You activate the fiend monster's effect, send this from the deck to the graveyard, that effect to send the Harris, even though the fiend monster could have sent the Harris anyways. Huh. Okay, well, if this card is drawn in like Dark World, you can send it in your graveyard by Dark World Dealings, and then that can send the Harris that you probably could just play more copies of. Okay, I haven't found a use for this card just yet, but I, I think it's a pretty decent card. The next card is going to be Metaphys Decoy Dragon. I thought that the Metaphys archetype was done. I actually really like the Metaphys archetype because basically what it is, is they take older monsters from the older Yu-Gi-Oh! series and then make them into Metaphys Worm monsters and give them different effects. It's almost like a retrain. Uh, this one's a Pendulum monster, and its Pendulum effect is actually, it's stats are, it's a level 2, 300 attack, 300 defense, pin scale 1 monster, and its effect is you you can only use this card to pendulum effect once per turn. When a monster you control is targeted for an attack, you can target one Metaphys monster you have that is in your ban or that is banished or in your graveyard. Banish this card, and if you do, special summon this card in attack position. That's a pretty decent effect. I was actually expecting um, it to have a restrictive effect saying that you can only special summon Metaphys monsters from your hand or your extra deck or something like that. But its effect is not that bad. I mean, I can't really. I can't. 
Sh it's good. Uh, it's it's monster effect is you can only use this card's monster one and two effects per turn. When a monster you control is targeted for attack, you can target one metaphys monster that is banished or in your graveyard. Banish this card from the field, and if you do special summon that target in attack position, that's similar to what we just had, if that isn't the exact same effect. I think it's the exact same effect. That, that's nothing new. The second effect is if this card is banished during your standby phase of your next turn, special summon this banished card. Oh my god. So hold on. You place it in your pin scale, you stop an attack, you banish it, you special summon a monster, then you special summon this on your next standby phase. Then your opponent tries to attack that Metaphys monster, you banish it, and then you special summon it again. Huh. This card is, this card's pretty good. It's, it's, it's pretty decent for Metaphys. I think it's some really good support. Will it make Metaphys over the top? No, but it's still really good support. That, that's all I can say. Uh, the next card is going to be Goki Double Team. Uh, Goki 2 Platoon, but 4Kids Media dubbed it already Do Goki Double Team. It's an Earth Warrior Monster with 1500 attack, or with 1700 attack, level 5, zero defense. We already have a level 5 Goki Monster, so I'm really interested to find out what this card does. If this card is sent to the graveyard for a Link Material of a Goki Link Monster, you can activate this effect. That monster gains a thousand attack until the end of the turn. That's garbage. That is the most garbage effect I've read on Gokis. Is it? Nah, uh, no, it isn't. <laughs> during your main phase, except during the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, target one Goki spell card in your graveyard, shuffle it into your deck. I can't think of a time where I've used all three copies of Goki Rematch and haven't won the game by then. And at the same time, I don't know any of the new Goki support yet. But I'm going to tell you right now, this card seems trash. It doesn't even have the... Uh, basic Goki, when it's into the graveyard, add one Goki monster from your deck to your hand. Had it did, it'd be a little better, but it, it isn't that good. This card, the next card is going to be High Cupid. <laughs> oh, I get it. It's like High Stupid, but Cupid? No? All right, but I still think it's cool. Uh, it's a level one light fairy monster with 600 attack, 600 defense. You can activate this card's one and two effects per turn. You can send the top three cards from your top of your deck to your graveyard this turn. Oh my God, it's a card trooper. I love card trooper. Troop. Uh, increase this card's level by the number of cards sent. So it becomes a level four monster. Okay, I guess. 1500 attack is too much. If this card is destroyed by your opponent, or if this card is destroyed by your opponent since the graveyard gained 1500 life points. Huh. At least it gives you enough to strike your opponent again. Because you're high Cupid. <laughs> Anyways, the next card is going to be Psycho Ace. If this card is tributed in the monster zone, you can target one card on the field. Destroy it. It is an emergency teleport target because it is level 2. Other than that, we still haven't had a good psychic monster in a very long time. Like, a good off-theme psychic monster. I can't remember one. I just don't. The next card we're going to be talking about is Mech Knight Morning Star. It is a Link 2 Light Machine Monster with an effect. Its arrows are pointing to bottom left and bottom right. It says uh, the materials are two monsters, including a Mech Knight Monster. Oh, shit. That's pretty good. So as long as you have one Mech Knight Monster, you're good. You can only use this card's one effect once per turn. If the card is Link Summon, you can discard one Mech Knight or one World Legacy card. Add one World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. That's pretty good. While this card is in your monster zone, Mech Knight monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle with the monsters in a different column from them, and you take no damage from those battles, so not only do I have to find a way to get over your monster, it has to be in the right column. So the monster that I use to get over your monster can't use, be used to get over another monster. This card's pretty decent. I think, more importantly, it has the arrows pointing downward, and it is a Link 2. That is the best thing about it. Everything else is just icing on the cake. The next card we're going to talk about is Reploticus. Now, Reploticus is a Link to Earth dinosaur monster with 800 attack. It has a Link to defense. Uh, its links are bottom, bottom and top, <laughs> and it requires just two monsters. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. You can only use this card's names effect once per turn. You can activate one of these effects. Declare one monster type. Face up monsters that this card points to become declared type until the end of the turn. Well, if I ever needed a way to use my True King cards, then this card definitely fits the cake. It's too effective to declare one monster attribute. Face up monsters this card points you can come to declare. All right, so if I ever wanted to make Logia, if I ever wanted to make Dragons, or if I ever wanted to use my True Kings, this card's definitely going to help me. Um, I think that this really just reinforces the True King aspect 
to the deck. I'm not sure about monster type. Um, I read the monster type, so I immediately assumed it was going to do tribute for the same thing. But I'm not sure what we would do for type, other than make uh, shut all monsters dinosaurs so we can exceed with them. That's really about it. That, that, that's it. And literally, if it acts, if you ask me, it solidifies shadows. It solidifies true kings inside of the dinosaur archetype. The next card is Extra Link. Okay, I was expecting like one of the arrows to point up. You're like, oh my god, the show is real. The prophecies have been fulfilled. Yu-Gi-Oh is doomed. It is a continuous spell card. This is activate this card by targeting one Link monster you control that is co-linked with the Link monster in the Extra Monster Zone. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? No. All right. The target gains injured attack for each Link monster on the field. It's like United We Stands. If this card, if this target is used, if the target is used for a Link material for a Link summon, that Link monster gains attack equal to the attack. At the end of the damage calculation in which this card attacked, destroy that card. This card is just utter trash. That's all I can tell you. Mark of all these. That card's trash. It's not good. The next card we're going to be talking about is Shield Handler. Oh my god. It, it looks so cool. When a card or effect that would destroy a monster on the field is activated, target one Link monster at each side of the field, negate the effects of the target's monster. Your opponent controls, and if you do equip this card to the monster you control, it cannot be destroyed by card effects. Okay, that's trash. Reverse world. Okay. You can only activate this. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. Ritual summon one Ruin Queen or Demise King from your hand or deck. What the? Whoa. By attributing ritual monsters from your hand whose combined levels equal or exceed. Whoa. And it's a quick play. Whoa. That's pretty good from your hand or deck. Wasn't expecting that. Magical Lab, and immediately off the bat, this card looks like something for spell counters. Or Magical City, uh, 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 you know, in Damien. Um, each time a phase up mythical beast monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, place two spell counters on this card. Oh, so when it destroys themselves, you get two spell counters. That's cool. Once per turn, you can remove any number of spell counters from your field, add one monster from your hand. All right, any, add one monster to your hand that you can place a spell counter on whose level is different, whose level is the same number of spell counters you removed from your deck or that is a pendulum face up from your extra deck. Okay, so it searches, it searches. If this card in the field will be destroyed by a counter effect, you can remove one spell counter on this card instead. It's a pretty decent card. I think it's going to be pretty good for Mythical Beasts, of course. The next card is going to be, whoa, Vorticular Drum God. Okay. Uh, it's a link three monster with three, <laughs> three leaf. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a link three dark dragon link effect monster. It requires three dark dragons, and its link arrows are in different directions. Okay, at least none of them are pointing up. If this guy is special summon, you can draw one card. Oh my god, that's all we needed using three monsters to draw one card. Oh my, that is the most. Yo, it's terrible and it has the arrow pointing down so then you can link you can summon again that card's trash so far during the turn you apply this effect unused monster zones what the fuck this card is the worst fucking card this is the worst link monster i've ever seen oh my oh whoa <laughs> i'd rather use inco talker this card's so trash all right Yogan Tucci's Seer's Pastor Book. I would I would probably say it's a Seer card because Crystal Seer is on the card. You can activate one you can activate one card with this card's name per turn. Banish the top three cards from your deck face down. During your third standby phase after activating this card, add the three cards banished by this effect. Yu-Gi-Oh is gonna um, And I'm gonna tell you guys why. If you open this card and you activate it, games are gonna take longer than three turns. Let's just put it, it is. So on the fourth turn, you get to draw three cards and you get to thin your deck to my three cards. This card's awesome, turn one. Any other turn than turn one, I just could not see it unless it was some gimmicky deck that could abuse like banishing cards face down and, okay, it's not that good. The next card is going to be Dealer's Choice. This card reminds me of Card Trader because it's exactly what it is. Both players shuffle their decks. If they do draw one card, then each player discards one card. It's a trap card, so it's immediately bad. Next is the Deep Grave. It's a normal trap card. Target one monster in either graveyard. During the next time I face, special summon that monster to your graveyard to your side of the field. Why? Just Monster Reborn. Just, just Monster Reborn. Crossbreed. 
Uh, it's a normal spell card. You can only activate this one with this card's name once per turn. Banish two monsters from your... Banish two... <laughs> sorry. Banish two face-up monsters from your field or from your hand, whose original type and attribute are the same, but with different names. Add one monster from your deck to your hand, whose original type and attribute are the same as those monsters, but with different names from either of them. So immediately off the top of my head, you're going to need uh, an archetype that needs to be banished, that likes to be banished. I'm thinking DD literally off the top of my head. Um, that gain their effects off would be banished. And then you have to have four, at least four monsters that you have to, that you play three of inside of this deck. Um, until then, this card will be trash. But you need those stipulations. Four monsters that love to be banished, that need to be banished, that gain their effects. Oh shit, Metaphys. Oh, freak show. That's good for Metaphys. That, that's pretty decent for Metaphys. And it searches. Oh, wow, whoa, that, that's, that's, I like that. The next is World Legacy Survival. You can activate one card with this card's name once per turn. Excavate the top five cards from your deck. Add one excavated crawler monster or one World Legacy card from to your hand. Also, send the other cards to the graveyard. If no, if there were no excavated crawler or world legacy cards, shuffle all excavated cards to the deck. You cannot spell summon from your extra deck for the rest of the turn except for link monsters. Immediately, I was screaming, oh my god, crawler shadows are going to be a thing. And then it says I can't even summon shadow monsters. So, I don't I don't know. I don't know. El Shadow Fusion does exist, though. The next card is Obla Mirage, the Elemental Lord. It's a level 8 Dark Fiend monster, and it's an Elemental Lord, so I immediately like it. Cannot be normal summon or set. Must be spell summoned from your hand by having exactly five dark monsters in your graveyard. We already knew that. You can only use this effect once per turn. It's one effect. If this card is spell summoned, you can add one monster with 1,500 or less from your deck. Add one monster. Add one monster. Add one. Add one monster. Add one fucking. Oh my god. Add one monster. What are we doing? What day? Add one. One month. Oh my god. Oh, we, we have Sangan again. Except it's a, it's a lot more restrictive unless you're playing the deck. It's just <laughs> free my nigga Sangam like to his old effects. I, okay, it's a pretty good card. It's a pretty it's a good card. Four elemental lords. Everything else mediocre because you have to have exactly five. So it's like might as well just play elemental lords. The next is Zeradius, the Miss Magic Crystal Dragon. It's a level six dark dragon. You can only use this card's name's effect once per turn. If this card is in your graveyard, hand or graveyard, and the spell or trap card you control leaves the field by an opponent's card, and it's in the graveyard are banished, you can spell summon this card. Then set one spell trap card from your field to your field from your banished cards or your graveyard. If this card was special summoned this way, banish it when it leaves the field. I like this card. It's a pretty cool card. It has a decent effect. Will it be played in every deck? No, it's not that great. Oh my god, do we have another frog? We have frog support. We have frog support, fellas. This card breeds cannot be used as a fusion, synchro, exe, or link. We don't have frog support. We we don't have frog support. We don't have frog support. It has it has the two thousand defense. It has the hundred attack. It has the. It's an aqua. It, it even says frog, but we don't have frog support. I am so sending this card from my deck to my graveyard and just banishing it with Ronnie boys. Wait, no, it's 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 Ronnie boy for you. Who cares about its effect? When this card is normal, someone to flip, someone change it to defense position. Okay. Once per turn, if this card is in defense position, you can target what monster your opponent controls in your main monster zone. Switch control of this card to your opponent in the monster zone next to the targeted monster. Then, if, if your opponent has exactly two double cross frogs in their main monster zone, take control of all monsters your opponent controls in the zones between them. You know, I'd rather have it say that I can use it for all those things and just have no effect. It would just be, you don't have to have an effect. Um, unless they make a frog monster that says, or a spell card that says, special summon as many frogs banished to your side of the field. I, I, it's just another frog food for Ronnie Boy. I mean, that's all I see it as. It, it's, it's, I, that's it. It's not good, like as an effect, it's terrible. I mean, if you think about it, 
you don't use dupe frogs effect too much so you could throw this in for extra frog targets i i don't see why but you could it's there thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the cow effect if you guys want to see me stream today at 12 o'clock go ahead and get 150 likes on this video before 12 o'clock and i will be streaming really hope you guys enjoyed this if you did go to at least a like let's try to get to 100 likes and even more to let me know that you guys like this content um i hope you guys are having a great day like i am and be sure to stay safe guys it's really important it's crazy out in these streets especially with double cross fraud going and crossing people